IAEA spread the fire and here with Ndaje Badi Lehota, who is the former statistician general of South Africa and someone who always has amazing insights on our country. Ndaje, thanks for joining us today, first. Well, thank you very much. And as someone who's seen intimately the problems of our country through numbers, what do you think the president needs to do today in his speech and what issues does he need to focus on uh, to convince South Africans that this really is a new moment? I think fundamentally you must remember that uh, there is only one country on, the, on earth called South Africa. And we go it to ourselves to make it work. And that must always be at the back of our minds all the time. And it's important that when we face major challenges, that we must draw inspiration that it is the only country. It does happen, like in countries in Somalia, when Said Barra said he leave neither country nor people, Indeed, he left neither people nor country. We shouldn't find ourselves on that precipice as of Africa. We only have one country. Absolutely. And uh, therefore, to the youth yeah. who have to live 60 years from now on into the future, they must ensure that the past 10 years or the past 250 years never ever revisit South Africa. The challenges are major. And we can actually slide into that kind of situation. And so, very serious. We must know that this is the only country we have, and there's only one South Africa. And more importantly, if South Africa fails, the continent, without being arrogant, yeah. the entire continent fails. Because um, South Africa plays a major role. It has big infrastructure. It has all kinds of things that are very, very important for the continent, yeah. and therefore the role that South Africa plays in the continent, in SADC, is so crucial that it cannot allow it to fail. So all institutions must be rebuilt, uh, we have to invest in education critically, because that's where the future is, we must salvage everything, and this day must reflect our rededication and redoubling our efforts to ensure that South Africa works. And then hopefully one day the institution that you once led will start giving us more good news as opposed to just some bad news. Well, uh, you know, the head of the organization, Senga Marulega, knows that he gives you news. <laughs> they are not uh, yeah. good or bad. Yeah. He knows, he uses the best methods yeah. to provide the reality about South Africa. And uh, now as a former statistician general, I can say, well, the news is not that good. Uh, less than 1% or 1% growth can never take South Africa anywhere. Yeah. The likelihood of uh, load shedding and increases in the price of uh, energy, um, those are threats uh, to sustain growth of South Africa. More fundamentally, the absence of the necessary skills is a fundamental flaw uh, in our system. And if we could only put every energy and effort to developing human resources, because we are running far behind, and the fourth industrial revolution has come and it will pass us if we don't focus on human resources. Well, Tate, it was such an honor to have you. We thank you for the role you played in our society, being a voice of reason, often through data alone, and also adding words to that. So thank you for your contribution. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. At the inauguration of President Saul Ramaphosa with Professor Tiniko Maduleke, one of our country's most senior analysts and political minds, Professor, thanks so much for joining us. It's a tremendous occasion, I think. It is uh, exciting. I'm not sure about the ethics of the expenditure, but it's a real good moment. It should be. And what do you think President Ramaphosa needs to do today in his inaugural speech? I think he will need to say something about Africa Day, something about so I, I'm sure there will be something about Africa Day. There will also be something about uh, his new dawn. Uh, he, he might tell us more about it. Uh, but also what he's going to do about the economy to uh, revive it. Uh, and perhaps um, he might quote Mandela. I've seen him invoking Mandela again and again. So those are some of the things that I think uh, he will have to say. But South Africans are no longer as patient as they were for his predecessor. So he will have to announce some pretty 
concrete plan. Yeah. And of course, about 24 hours after this, we're expecting the cabinet to be announced. Um, what are you thinking he needs to do on that score in order to convince South Africans that this new dawn is real? I think he needs to stay away from all those controversial people, not put them into cabinet. I don't think he needs them. The country doesn't need them and I think he can be honest with us and with himself now. He doesn't have to play the game that he has been playing until now. And just finally, what were your thoughts on the um, situation with Deputy President Mabuza and his decision not to join Parliament? What do you think that tells us about the ANC at the moment? You know, Deputy President Mabuza is a, a very wily politician. So I wouldn't want to speak too quickly about him. I think that uh, we might still see him as deputy president. Also, South Africa has a history of problems with deputy president. Every president tries to get a deputy president they can control. And every president so far has failed to find a deputy president they can control. We will see if uh, Cyril Ramaphosa will succeed. Well, thanks so much for joining us on SMWX. Thank you. Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. I'm here with Kamil Ali, who is president of the Muslim Students Association, MSA president, and Fasi Hassan, an SMWX veteran by now, and youngest member of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. Thank you both so much for joining me as two important young voices in South Africa right now. Um, Fasiha. Um, to observe protocol since you have risen to high office. How are you feeling to be here? And what do you think the president needs to say today to convince South Africans that this really is a new moment? Look, I think it's our first inauguration that uh, I'm attending that I feel really a part of. Um, but I'm particularly looking VIP forward to hear stuff around youth. Um, they you know, will one, of us, one of the things that we're really going to do now that we've entered public office is yeah. ensure that every single policy or decision um, that's that taken, we need to understand the impact on youth and young people, particularly on youth unemployment. Um, so that's really something I'm looking to hear about. Absolutely. Kamil, um, how are you feeling to be here? Is this your first inauguration? Yeah, it is. It's my first. Um, it's quite an amazing atmosphere so far. Yeah, um, there's definitely a sense of, of, of jubilation and, and hope. And, yeah, you know, you go in the kind of legal that we've been using. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to hear what the president has to say. Definitely also keen to hear what he has to say around graduate unemployment and you know, the kind of issues that we, that we have seen around the country at the moment. Sure. So, well, hope you guys enjoy your day. Thanks so much for joining SMWX. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Spread the fire. Welcome to SMWX. And I'm here with Mayor Mara Lowe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. How are you at this moment to be here at this inauguration? Uh, you know what? I am so elated. I am so excited. First of all, I know I'm, I, I never boast, but uh, Cyril is younger than me <laughs> by four months. Wow. I'm older than him by four months. We went to school at the same time in Soweto. I was at Orlando West High School yeah. and he was at Scanon Guana. Wow. But we I've known him all my life. So today, to, to be here and have this experience of one of, you know, I can relate to and he's a president. So I'm thinking for the younger people, the younger generation, yourself, you can look at that boy and think this is a guy who was born in Soweto and look at him today. You can do it person can do it. They need to look up to people like him, people like us, people like Madiba and say, well, these people were not born from Mars. They were born in the same yeah. township under worst, under the worst of apartheid where we didn't have the opportunities that the youth has got today. So all they need to do is dream bigger. Don't dream about small anyana things. Yeah. Dream big. And, not, and don't dream about small anyana skeletons either. And don't keep <laughs> skeletons. Yeah. Don't be a person that's going to be afraid to mix with people. Because, whoo, my bang bonabaza do. Now, for me, I am so proud of Cyril. I read Matamel. I read Matamel. And I think he's calm. 
he's not a big dancer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, order, man. Order, order, order. No, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. criticizing no, anybody. No, no. But we have big problems. Man. But we have big problems. And today, I have to be honest. Yeah. No. Wow. I didn't think today was going to happen. I was worried that we, we are generating into a civil war. I could actually pray. I was praying every night that Lord, we managed to avoid a civil war when we when we moved out of apartheid. We are still not free. It's still not the freedom that we envisage. We're still very far from it. We, we, we still have a long way to go. My biggest dream is to have black people united. When I see the way we pulling each other, you know, and I'm thinking, I can't, and I have to say this, Dana, I have yeah. to say this. I was married to a Scotsman many years ago. Uh, we were married for 19 years. He was from Scotland. When Madiba was released, we were all sitting in front of our television set, celebrating. You know what he said? I cast his words today. And I cast his words because he spit out something which for one minute I was angry with him. But again I thought, where is he coming with this? What does he know that I don't know? He said to me, he says, Mara, you see how excited everybody is that Madiba is out. Yeah. It's not going to be long before you black people are going to be fighting each other. Yeah. Your enemy will be watching and saying, ha ha, watch them. You know it is happening and it breaks my heart. It, it breaks my heart because he said it with his mouth. When Madiba was walking out of Robben Island, out of cloth, he says, now you black people are going to start fighting each other. And you know, within a couple of months or a year, when the ANC was at Shell House, yeah. guess what happened? You remember mm. when Inkata came to attack outside the building yes, of the yeah, ANC? Yeah. How many people got killed? Mm. My husband says, That's all. I told yeah. you so. Well, let's hope that... And that's... now I prayed before these elections. Yeah. I started seeing each other doing the same thing. Yeah. Verbal abusing each other. Verbally saying things. Trust me, when I say I was married to a Scotsman, my husband was a white guy, but we used to say he's a pigmentarily disadvantaged Scottish African because he was more a black man than a, a white guy. Yeah, yeah. And what he used to say, it scared me. And when I see us yeah. doing this, wherever he is now, he's laughing, saying, I told him. So that's the message you have for the us The message, today. what I want to say, yeah. I wish as black people, we could all now start focusing. We need to pull ourselves towards ourselves and start focusing on what is it exactly we fought the struggle for? We, what, what was the struggle's fight for? Why did I have to suffer? Why did my family have to die and get killed? What, was that, what is it that we were fighting for when we are now fighting each other? The words that come out of our mouths, insulting each other. When you hear a small boy talking to an adult, you know, I'm, I'm almost 70 years old, but when I see a young boy talking to me like I was a teenager, like I was a classmate, I'm like, and the Bible that I read says, I wish we could, I wish black people can just just go and sit in the bathroom and talk to yourself and say, what am I doing? Why am I hating my next black man? Why am I hating an African man from another part of South Africa? Africa must belong to all who live in it. It doesn't say just South Africa. Our black brothers, they should not be our enemies. We call them names. No, look, Mom, I think as, as uh, the president addresses the nation, let's hope that these kinds of issues um, are in the backs of people's minds and especially for a younger generation that we think about how to create a greater unity in our country. You know, if 
if we can all unite, you know, there's a video that's been doing the rounds that was taken in Parliament when uh, Mifun was confirming the, the parliamentarians. That video had all the black people, EFF, ANC, uh, and black people were sitting in the stand singing this one song. Did you see that video? I was there. The one song. The only people who were seated were the EF, uh, DE, DA. The black people in the DA were too scared to stand because their buses are sitting there. Because that song, they shabang apagat kubelu. Now, if black people can be that united for yeah. that short space of time, yeah. what's stopping us from carrying that through? Kasi sutu bara swabi sang sadan. Oba na belu mabe ngaspona site. Songe, songe. And I know we've got our own differences, but the way we deal with them, it should be internal. But out there, if we can unite, I'll die a very happy woman. Well, Mom, we hope uh, our subscribers get that message, and we're very glad to have had the time to chat to you at this auspicious occasion. Spread the fire. I'm here with Mr. Jeff Rothschild, who is a trustee of Brand South Africa. So thanks so much for coming on to SMWX. It's only a pleasure and a privilege, and I'm so thrilled to hear that you're addressing the young people, because that's the future of South Africa. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's an honor to have you on our channel. And what are you hoping we hear from the president today in this moment as we enter a new era in South African politics? I'm sincerely hoping that we're going to clean up corruption, that we get on with running the country, and we can get rid of all the misdemeanors that have happened in the past, and that we can actually provide the jobs, the much needed jobs we need. And how important is that for Brand South Africa that we get back onto the front foot and position our well, nation? As, as Brand South Africa, our motto is play your part, and that's for every single citizen of the country to do their bit and to make sure that they raise us, that our economy grows, that there's a bigger power to share, and that we alleviate poverty. Absolutely. And just finally, a uh, message to young South Africans watching on today. Um, what's your sense of how they should be feeling as President Kamakosa compares to I would say the message to young South Africa is there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of opportunity, and it's up to you to make the difference. Well, sir, thanks so much for joining SMWX. Good. SMWX. No young people are around the decision-making table. Let some new voices come to the fore. Follow us on WhatsApp and catch us live Tuesdays and Thursdays. Out with the old, in with the new. SMWX.